What's up my dudes? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're talking about deployment methods. Some uh, you know ways to open up your pocket knife. First of all, if you haven't subscribed, do that right now before we go any further. Or you can do it afterwards. You can watch the video and see if you like the channel first. That's fine. But don't forget uh, to do it after and follow me on Instagram, duties underscore daggers. So, um, deployment methods. There's a lot of ways you can open up your knife. Um, there's all kinds of them. We're going to go through them, uh, the main ones, uh, right now. I have two examples of two knives of uh, using each deployment method I'm going to talk about. Um, and for the most part, those knives um, are dedicated that opening method, whatever it is the one we're talking about. Um, there's one or two that have multiple, but for the most part, they're just dedicated one way to open the knife, and we're going to start with thumb studs, because I think it's the oldest way to open a knife. Well, actually, that's a lie. First, we had slip joints. Um, you know, for a long time, you had to use two hands to open up a pocket knife. Um, that's just how it was for the longest time. I would be curious to know, what was the first uh, you know, larger production knife to use thumb studs? If anyone knows, let me know. Uh, I'd be very curious to know. Uh, but for a long time, you had to use two hands. Um, yeah, just how it was, slip joints. Uh, this is the Benchmade Proper. This is the Spiderco Roadie. Both slip joints I enjoy. Um, the Benchmade Proper here, This is a, I think this is a great design. Uh, a lot of people uh, don't like it because the, it has a pretty weak back spring. You don't get the nice... Uh, snap and pop that you get from um you know other slip joints the walk and talk as they say the pull um and it does bother me it absolutely does but aside from that if i can look past that this is a really good design the micarta is very good quality um great blade shape it's not ridiculously thin at the edge but it's thin enough um the blade's nicely stone washed um I just think it's a good looking knife. It looks like a classic knife. Uh, it's very light. Uh, this is usually what I throw in my pocket if I want to carry a lightweight knife um, for, you know, light use. Um, it's great. Um, I really like the Benchmade proper. This is the Spiderco Roadie. This one's a little weird looking. We have a little bit of a dimple here on either side of the blade. That's meant so that you can easily pull it out, but um, honestly, you really don't need it to pull the blade out. Um, you got the hump there. That's all you really need. Um, this was designed by Spyderco to uh, um, meet the requirements for TSA. Um, after 9-11 happened uh, a few years later, they were considering letting knives back on planes, um, but only if they met a list of uh, you know requirements. Um, so Spyderco made this knife to specifically meet those requirements so that people could carry this knife on planes. And then TSA decided to not do that anymore. They decided to uh, not go through with it, and um, knives are still not allowed on planes. But Spyderco decided to release the roadie anyways. And um, I actually quite like it. It's got a sheep's foot blade, a uh, choke-up spot so it can't close on you as you're using it. Um, not the strongest uh, walk and talk on this one either. A little more snappy than the proper though. Um, I like it. It's just kind of a, a funky little spider co. Um, good to have in the collection. The blade steel on this one is uh, N690. The blade steel on the proper here is S30V. So, that's slip joints. Thumb studs, baby. Probably the, uh, the first opening mechanism or uh, deployment method rather um, you know uh, after slip joints thumb studs and they've really stood the test of time um, thumb studs are still one of my favorite ways to open up a knife for sure um, there's typically two of them on either side of the blade although there are some exceptions which I've never really understood why would you make a knife that only righties can use easily you know, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. I guess on some you can flip it over if you're a lefty. But, you know, still, whether you're righty or lefty uh, and you don't have a thumb stud on the opposite side, you wouldn't be able to do the uh, the reverse flick off of the thumb stud. That's another. That's the reason I like thumb studs is um, 
you have two options. You can thumb flick it, and you can also reverse flick it. Um, I like thumb studs. Uh, you know, there's really there's really something satisfying about a, a good detent on um, a thumb stud opening knife. It's just really satisfying to kick kick the blade out like that. Um, I think the the only real downside to thumb studs are sometimes they can be in the cutting path. Um, I don't have a great example of that. I don't, let me see. No, I don't have a great example of that. But some, on this knife, it doesn't matter because the thumb stud is right behind the finger choil here. But on some knives, you know, say this blade came down further, um, you can't really use this portion of the blade for slicing because, you know, the material would come up past the edge and it would hit the thumb stud. Um, you see that on some knives, um, you know, thumb studs that are in the way of the cutting path. Uh, this one here is sort of, it's not, re I don't think you would ever realistically hit the, the thumb stud on the drop bear here. Um, on some knives, it's it's much worse. Um, so I, I would say that's a, a major downside to thumb studs. Um, and that's really the only downside I can think of. Um, let me know what you think down below. If you think uh, there's some more downsides to thumb studs, um, that's the only one I can uh, I can really think of, though. This is the uh, Chavez Scapegoat, made by Riat, designed by Chavez, Ramon Chavez. And um, it's the uh, one of the Chavez designs that really uh, kind of spoke to me as I was uh, looking to buy my first Chavez knife. This was the one that uh, really jumped out at me. Um, I think it has to do with the blade shape. Um, it's a... I guess you could call it a clip point or a drop point, but either way, it has a pretty low tip. Um, just a absolutely mean, 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 mean looking knife. Um, very generous and deep forward finger choil here. Uh, it's probably one of the deepest finger choils I've ever put my finger in. Uh, that edge is almost like past the top of your finger, almost. Um, it just feels really comfortable to be that deep in there. Um, make all the, the sexu sexual innuendo jokes that you want there. Um, but even jerked back, really comfortable. Um, this is just, you know, it's unmistakably a Chavez. And it's classy. He, he uses uh, simple lines coming together to make something super duper just wicked. Um, like I said, made by Riot. The action on this thing, incredible. I love that click as it shuts. Um, thumb stud action is excellent. These thumb studs are, uh, are pretty big. They're kind of just beefy big boys. I really like it. Um, titanium frame lock, um, milled out, uh, titanium clip. Also come, this is the, the, uh, plain clip that it comes with. Um, the clip that comes on the knife when you buy it is the skull clip, which I actually really like. I just wanted to try this one out as well. Um, some people don't like the skull clip. I don't have a problem with it personally. Um, just an awesome knife, M390, kind of, uh, you know, not a lot going on, but, but somehow he just designs these knives to where they're just super badass looking. And then the Kaiser Drop Bear. This is one that I've, um, I've committed to carrying for 30 days to do a long-term review on, um, because I really, really like it. I... I am okay with carrying this for a full month. I, I like it that much. And I just kind of wanted to see how it would do uh, long term. Uh, 154cm blade steel on this guy. Um, this was Kaiser's first attempt at a crossbar lock, and they absolutely uh, just destroyed it. They, they did such a good job. This is better than any Benchmade crossbar lock I've ever tried, easily. Um, it's just... Uh, it, the detent's great. Um, it's so smooth when you pull it back. It's, it's a free swinging blade with solid lockup, which you don't always get with bench made. It's just unbelievable. Um, it comes with a stronger set of springs, which I have in here, um, and you can also adjust the springs in here to give yourself a little bit of a stronger detent and a stronger, um, you know, uh, more resistance. And uh, so you can really dial it in exactly how you want it. Um, it's incredible. It really is. Um, aluminum handles. I have a um, Kaiser's Deep Carry clip on it with some gold thumb studs, um, which you can get on the Kaiser site. 
the drop bear. It's um, you know, it's a, it's just kind of a typical drop point slash spear point blade shape, but um, it's more unique looking than a lot of uh, others I've seen. Um, probably something to do with the swedge there, um, but just how it kind of aggressively slopes down to the point here um, is kind of unique. You know, um, I love it. They did a good job with the sharpening choil. Excellent knife. So next uh, deployment method we should talk about is probably flipper tabs. Um, these are two, uh, you know, flipper tab only knives here. This is the um, Finch Holiday and the Protec Malibu. Um, I'll be straight up with you guys. I, I'm not uh, a huge flipper only fan. Um, in fact, I'm not a fan of flippers in general, even if there are other means of deployments. Um, I usually prefer, you know, all the other means of deployment. But I got to say, when you have a detent that's tuned perfectly for that flipper tab, it is very satisfying to flip that blade out. Possibly the reason why I haven't, you know, historically been a fan is I just haven't had a really good flipper tab, you know, with a good detent. Because this holiday, man, is satisfying to pop it out. The Malibu, even more so. It's just, it, you know, the, that crisp breakaway really makes a huge difference. Um, it's just very satisfying to flip. Um, now, a few drawbacks, or one drawback that I can think of in particular to a flipper tab is, um, you know, it they stick out past the confines of the scales here so it's it can be a, a pocket snagger um, as you're pulling it in, in and out of your pocket um, another kind of downside is in the open position it's always going to be sticking out right in here now in some cases like the xm18 for example um, in the uh, closed position it kind of curls up in the open position it's curling down which creates kind of a nice little uh, finger guard for you in a very comfortable place to kind of brace up against and you also have a finger choil um, Above that so you can just go above it if you want to choke up um, So this was a you know um, Rick Henderer did a great job of designing this to have um, a flipper tab But also still a choke up spot and just a uh, good ergonomics um, But that's not always the case um, It doesn't bother me on the Malibu at all, but you know there, there's no choke up spot and if you wanted to choke up, you couldn't really because the, the flipper tab is right there. Um, so those are some downsides to flipper tabs. Um, the Finch uh, Holiday here, kind of the same idea um, as the Hinderer. In the op closed position, it's like that. In the open position, it's kind of uh, angled downward. So you can um, choke up and put your finger kind of above it, right on this little flat spot. Um, not you know, not my favorite uh, means of deployment, but if you get a good one, like with a well-tuned detent, uh, it's great. It's very very satisfying to pop the blades out. So the Finch Holiday, this was a gift from my buddy Diener. I'll never sell it. I really really love this knife. Um, just super duper duper well made. Um, it's a, a stainless steel uh, you know bolster bolster lock, I guess you could say. Basically a frame lock, but this uh, micarta inlay is covering up part of the lock bar. Um, stainless steel bolsters, like I said. Um, this inlay work is just flawless. Running your finger over, you can't even tell. You cannot feel where the micarta ends and this um, sapphire on the shield begins. Or on the micarta to the stainless steel. You, you, you can feel a, a change in texture, but you cannot feel um, those seams at all. Just really well done. If you look on the back here, just completely smooth. Um, hand rubbed satin finish on the blade, which is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. 154cm blade steel and uh, milled titanium clip. Works fantastically. Um, this thing is just a pleasure to flip. It really is. You get kind of a tinny, uh, tinny sort of click closed. Excellent. Super duper excellent. Um, yeah, I love it. Finch Holiday. Um, it also has a flat bottom, so you can stand it up like this if you ever wanted to. Probably not the best idea to do. Closed, it's fine. I would probably do it open. Um, 
the uh, Protec Malibu. This was my first, um, my first Protec and my first Malibu. Um, I've been a fan of button locks for quite a while, but uh, never got around to or was able to uh, try out the, the king of button locks, the Malibu. And um, as soon as I flipped one, um, I realized what all the fuss was about. Um, it's fantastic. It's uh, it's hands down the best button lock I've ever tried. The smoothest, the crispest detent, um, the best button, you know, it's flush with the scale, easy to press, um, that blade just, it just goes home every single time. There's no bouncing, it just, it goes home. Easy as that. Let me let the dog in really quick. Hey baby, he's a good boy. Um... So yeah, excellent knife. Um, this is the blacked out um, PVK exclusive version of the Malibu in 3V blade steel. Um, this coating on the aluminum is very interesting. Um, it feels unlike any other coating that I've felt uh, on aluminum. Usually it's a little bit smoother. This feels, uh, it feels almost like slightly fuzzy. <laughs> it's really weird, man. Um, if any of you guys own this knife or something similar, i um, very curious what it is. If it's something special, if it's just the usual kind of Cerakote, whatever it is. Um, whatever it is, I love it. I really love it. Deep Cray Pocket Clip that's inset. Um, just a, an incredible, incredible knife. One of my favorites of all time, already. All right. Let's move on. We have two more here. Let's do... Um, Blade cutouts, one of my favorite methods of deployment is when knives have cutouts in their blades. Now these two have no other means of deployment, just the cutout, which is my favorite way to do the cutout. Um, you know, you don't have thumb studs to get in your, in your cutting path. You don't have flipper tabs to get snagged anywhere. Um, just a very sleek way to uh, have a deployment method on a knife. Um, you know, it's genius. It doesn't get in the cutting path. You can reverse flick it or thumb flick it. Whoops. Or thumb flick it. Um, and you don't have a flipper tab getting in the way of your ergonomics in the open position or closed, getting stuck on your pockets or uh, or whatever. Excellent. Excellent. Um, Spyderco is probably the most well-known uh, for doing this. They have um, a lot, a lot of knives that are, you know... Um, uh, uh, you know, cutouts only without uh, any other means of deployment. Um, you know, it's weird. It's kind of a side note. Um, I took the CME off of my PM2 um, just because I was kind of getting tired of it. I wanted to uh, get back to uh, to my roots and really feel what a compression lock feels like again. And um, I have really bad uh, lock stick. Um, I think I always had it. I remember I had it before I put on the CME. Um, but with the CME on here, I really, it wasn't this bad. And now that it's off, I can really feel it again. Um, so I don't know, that's kind of funky. Now the, now the dog wants to get out. God damn it. What? So I don't know. Um, I don't know why that happened. Um, I guess I just couldn't notice it with the CME on there. So it was so easy to push it maybe. Um, I don't think it, it all of a sudden developed lockstick. I don't think that would be uh, possible. Um, but regardless, I'm sure it'll work itself out. Um, but if you hear that weird click, that's that's what that is. That's lockstick. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, the blade cutout is uh, one of my favorite ways to to, to do it. Um, reverse flick. You know, if it's in the right spot and it's a, a large enough opening, is just excellent. Easier than a thumb stud to reverse flick off of for obvious reasons. You know, you have a larger target for your finger to hit. Um, and just uh, more leverage, you know. Um, this is the Devo Knives Mash. And the D10 is tuned perfectly for this blade cutout. Um, really, really good. Um, the PM2 here, also perfect. Really, really perfect for the reverse flick. Um, another cool thing you can do uh, more easily with the hole is you can do this. You can flip it around like that and then pop it open that way. 
kind of a little little cool little trick, you know. If you want to impress the ladies, you can pop your knife out like that. Uh, you can also reverse flick with your pointer finger. You can reverse flick with your whatever this finger is. You can even reverse flick with your pinky finger if you're feeling... Oops. Oops, come on. Come on, baby. Come on, we can do it. Come on. Yeah, you can reverse flick with all your fingers. And you can thumb flick, obviously. And the slow roll is really satisfying, you know? Uh, you put your thumb in the hole there, and it just kind of rotates around your thumb as you uh, swing it open. Um, just a really versatile deployment method. A lot of ways you can uh, you can do it. So the Devo Knives Mash. Um, this is uh, Devo Knives' uh, latest uh, release. Uh, it sold out in five minutes. It was a, a Blue Creek Knives exclusive. Um, and I'm really happy with it. Really happy with it. Um, if you missed out on that drop, uh, do not worry because the uh, there will be another coming, uh, I wouldn't say soon, but in the next, I don't know, one to five months but there there will be another one um this is full titanium construction with a stainless steel um inset liner lock which is a really cool way to uh to do a titanium frame knife you know typically they're frame locks this is an inset liner lock um just uh adds to the ease of use you know uh, righties or lefties get the same experience without that exposed frame lock this knife is super duper easy to use left-handed. Very, very easy. Um, nice hollow grind, sheep's foot blade, 15 thousandths behind the edge. Um, it's just a great knife. And the D10 is perfect, like I said, for the reverse flick. Um, neutral handle. You know, there's no uh, like pronounced finger choil area. You can just slide your hand all the way up. Or you can put it a more back. Doesn't matter. You put, put your hand wherever you want, and it's comfortable everywhere. Um, I love it. I'm very happy with it. And then just the classic, the classic PM2. Um, this knife is super popular for, for good reason. Um, some people think it looks ugly. I don't, but I understand why they do. Uh, it's not the most flowy knife aesthetically. Um, but that's because this knife was designed for work and for use and for, uh, you know, comfortability in the hand. I don't think that's a word. Um, and I love it. Um, fantastic work knife, you know. Um, choked back, uber, uber comfortable with this thumb ramp. And, um, you know, you're kind of uh, locked in up here. And then choked up, man. Holy crap. Unbelievably comfortable. Um, you know, one of the best ergonomics I've ever felt. Not the best, but definitely one of them. S45VN blade steel. This is my favorite steel in the entire collection. Love S45VN. Especially spider coats. Fantastic, fantastic job. Uh, this one's been customized with uh, titanium scales from Flytanium, a, uh, a brass uh, lanyard hole plug, and uh, an MXG deep carry clip. Awesome. Lastly, we have front flippers, baby. Front flippers, another of my favorite deployment methods. This one is... Um, Actually, has thumb studs as well, but just pretend they aren't there. Um, front flippers. Um, this is probably the most recent uh, innovation in deployment methods, I believe, until, uh, you know, well, I don't know when front flippers first uh, came out, but um, it's been kind of more recent than some of these others. Um, and I really like them. Um, the first time I saw someone front flip a knife, I, I thought, uh, wow, how is he even doing that? That doesn't seem like it makes sense. Um, if you hadn't, you know, imagine you've never seen a front flipper before. It looks really weird for someone to open a knife with their thumb up here, you know, pulling it back this way. It looks funky, especially this way. You're like, whoa, holy crap. It's weird. Um, but it, it totally makes sense, you know. Um, sort of like the, the cutout in the blade, you know, you don't have thumb studs or flipper tabs poking out of the back. Since it's poking out of the top, um, it's completely out of the way. Just a really good um, carry profile. Nothing snagging anywhere. Nothing in the cutting path either. And very satisfying and very fun to use. Um, there's a lot of ways you could open up a front flipper. 
You can put your thumb on it, pull it back. You can do the old reach around. You can do the old side of the finger and probably some others if you're creative. Um, it's one of my favorite ways to open up a knife. Absolutely. Um, I love it. Front flippers. Um, some people don't like front flippers. Um, one of my pet peeves is when people say, um, I can't do, I, I, I can't open a knife with a front flipper or they say, I'm not good at front flippers. Um, it just, it doesn't compute in my brain because there's a lot of things, uh, you know, I'm not good at, all right, and I haven't been good at. And you know what I did? I learned. I learned how to do them well. That's the same thing with run flippers. If you cared, well, I don't know, I guess they probably do care, but just practice. Just practice and you'll get good at it. It's just like anything else. Um, you know, who knows? Maybe their their hands are, are work differently than mine or they have an injury to where they can't push their thumb back. I don't know what, I don't know why. Um, you know, I understand if thumb, if uh, front flippers aren't your thing, that's totally fine. Um but when people say I I I'm not good at front flippers, it just I don't know. It's just kind of it's it's just a pet peeve. But anyways, personally, I love front flippers, and um, you know it did take me a while to get used to them. Absolutely. Whenever I get a new front flipper, they're all a little different. You know, the thumb placement is a little bit different, and it takes a second. It takes a second to uh, to get good at. But um, you know, you just learn. Um, this one here is the Wee Knives Evoke. Um, it's a Ray Laconico design made by Wee. Really fantastic. Uh, tumbled blue titanium. Incredible finish. One of the, my favorite finishes I've seen ever. Um, I absolutely love it. This knife is not mine. It's a loner. Um, but one day I will own this finish on a knife, on one of the Wee Knives. I will. Absolutely. <clears throat> um Gosh, I keep using the thumb studs. Uh, so uh, this front flipper in particular is a little bit harder to use than the McKenna. Um, you know, with front flippers, what you want is this nice fine jimping that's really grippy. And you want it to wrap over around the top of the little horn right here. Um, that's because uh, if you do it that way, it'll grip your finger. And, uh, you know, you don't have to put much pressure down to flip it. You just stick your finger on, put a little bit of downward pressure, that jimping grabs your finger, pull back, and you deploy the blade. That's how it should be done. This one here, um, this jimping is a little too wide and not very grippy, and it doesn't wrap around the top. So you do have to be careful where you put your thumb. Um, if you're too far up, you're going to slip off. Um, if you're too far down, it's good. It'll, it might work, but it's going to hurt your thumb and not, not work very well. So... You have to make sure you're in the right spot, but once you are, it works well. It works very well. This is the Civivi McKenna. The easiest front flipper I have ever, ever flipped is this knife, the McKenna. Um, this is a special version in um, aged tumbled copper scales, copper backspacer, and a raindrop Damascus blade. Really beautiful, beautiful knife. I have a uh, titanium uh, Civivi clip on it. Um, which really just uh, makes the knife a lot better, in my opinion, than the one uh, than the one it comes with. Um, just man, great design. It's an Elijah Isham design. Um, you probably recognize it if you uh, if you're a little familiar with his designs. It's just it's immediately uh, recognizable as an Isham design. Um, Twelve thousands behind the edge, so really, really thin and slicey. Um, great blade shape for uh, the type of cutting I do. And, uh, like I said, the easiest front flipper I've ever used. Um, just unbelievably easy. You don't even have to think about it. You put your finger up here, you pull it back, the blade just, the blade is, uh, is popped out. Simple as that. Incredible knife. So, those are the main, uh, deployment methods. Now, there are some knives, obviously, that, uh, you know, have a lot combined into one. This one has the cutout the flipper tab and the front flipper tab so those kinds of knives are really fun uh, some knives like the uh, Demco 80 20.5 this one has thumb studs and the thumb uh, you know the cutout um, you know there's a bunch of combinations Indirect M18 flipper tab and thumb studs um, 
So, you know, it's it starts getting uh, fun when you have multiple deployments because you get to choose how you want to open the knife. Um, but it's not necessary, you know. These examples were just, uh, you know, dedicated um, uh, deployment methods. Uh, but, you know, get a couple on there. Nothing wrong with that, you know. You'll get some of the downsides of, um, you know, some of the things I mentioned. Um, thumb stud might be a little in the cutting path if you have a, a thumb stud on there. Um, if it has a flipper tab as well, it might get snagged on stuff, especially this one. This is uh, this one sticks out quite a bit. Um, so, you know, it's just, uh, depends on your preference, you know, uh, you might not like front flippers is what it is. You know, you do you, man. Um, yeah. Um, I kind of, I, I guess I would say in general, I prefer to have at least two opening methods in general. I kind of prefer that, um, just kind of makes the knife a little more fun to me, you know, um, definitely don't need it as evidenced by, um, probably best evidenced by this knife or the Malibu. Both of these are, are dedicated thumb stud and dedicated flipper. And I, I really just love these knives very much. So it doesn't need to have multiple deployments for me to like it. But, um, you know, I, it, it really goes uh, as a kind of in a knife by knife basis. Um, some knives I feel should have one of their deployment methods eliminated. Some I feel could use an additional method some I think are absolutely just fine being uh, one method. So that's about it, Focorinos. Thanks for hanging out. Um, yeah, subscribe if you like the video. And if you didn't like it, uh, put a thumbs down. Dislike the video. Uh, that's better than not doing anything. Or leave me a comment and um, consider becoming a channel member. The channels get to, the channels the channel members get a uh, an exclusive video comes out every Saturday. Um, it's Saturday today for me, probably not when you see this, but uh, it's Saturday for me. I just finished filming the members only video. Um, we did some uh, some uh, uh, acid washing on a on a blade, and um, I told my uh, quick version of my life story. Uh, we hung out with the dog, a bunch of fun stuff. So consider it again if you don't want to or can't uh just like the video leave me a comment you guys are awesome i love you see you in the next one peace